Touch is amazing. It is very natural when it's done correctly. The question is how to make touch even better. What does it mean to have tools in a digital medium? So the problem with current touchscreens is this, that they're really all about where you touch and how many fingers you touch with. So it's really all about kind of poking with different numbers of fingers. And so a lot of the research we're looking at is how do you make touchscreens have better modality by capturing more interesting and powerful dimensions of touch. So here we have a touchscreen. It's a conventional touchscreen. We haven't modified it in any way, so it detects touches like you might expect. But what we've added to this is a special piece of software that does these inferences about how you might be touching. And the way we train this is we gave actually objects to people, like a camera, this camera, and we said, we wanted you to pretend you're taking a photo. And they would grasp it. And then we say, put the camera down and put that on the screen. And in this case, the software learned what that grasp was like. And in this case, you can see here, we've actually brought up a little virtual camera. And we can actually manipulate it very much like it is a real camera on the screen. And then we studied a whole bunch of other tools, like, for example, a pen. How you hold a pen, again, is really iconic. What we do is we actually look at the kind of constellation of touch points and their kind of um, spatial distribution. So you can imagine that when you touch a screen like this, you're going to have touch points along each of the fingertips. That looks very different than, for example, if I hold a pen. And so actually, again, we use machine learning to say, well, how do we interpret those points and make a guess about how the hand must be shaped in order for that to appear? And then we link that to the tool. Having a mouse actually lets you do some pretty sophisticated things. Um, we can do now pixel level uh, accurate uh, motions. I can also, for example, do uh, you know, copy. Uh, I can also you know, zoom in and out. Uh, all again with one hand gesture. We have to give each of these projects thousands of data points on what the underlying tools and underlying sounds must be like. And then we just say, learn what that is. So when you hear a new sound or a new type of touch, it can make a best guess about what that is. In this case, it's a touch screen that not only knows where you're touching, but also how you're touching. So what part of the, the finger you use. So for example, I can touch with my fingertip. That's traditional, but I can also do my knuckle. And now I can see I can get a knuckle recognition. I can also use my nail. It does it acoustically. So it actually listens to the sound. So the fact is your finger pad and your knuckle and your nail sound different. So in fact, if I tap on this table, you might be able to hear this with a microphone. I mean, it sounds different to the naked ear. And what we do is we take that knowledge and we have the accelerometer on the phone, listen to those sounds, and make a classification. So it's machine learning under the hood, and it's basically acoustically processing the impact. So when a touch happens, it goes, well, what sound did I hear? It says, mm, that sounds like a knuckle. We can go into something like um, a text editor, right? So here I can scroll as usual, but if I want to do selection, I can do now this. So I have a very easy way to, for example, cut. I can come down here and say I want to uh, paste over this paragraph touch as we know it today, multi-touch in particular, doesn't scale down to small sizes. And that's where a lot of these technologies are going to have the most impact. We, you know, if you just have even just finger touch and knuckle touch on a smartwatch, that's already given you twice as much kind of vocabulary of input than you did before, let alone pressure and shear and twist and all the other cool dimensions that our fingers do naturally. I don't want to give you the wrong impression that I think touch is bad. Touch is amazing. It is very natural when it's done correctly. The question is how to make touch even better. So we're working right now on uh, interactive technologies that actually make it make use of the space outside the smartwatch. So the smartwatch itself can be really small, but the area around you, your skin, can be really large. So the question is, the question is, the research question is, how do you make how do you make best use of your skin as a touch sensitive surface? Can you turn your skin into a touch screen? And we're working on technologies right now that do just that. Mm -hmm.